this being the most valuable prospect, I know that it doesn't mean I'm the best right now, but that it means I have the potential. And from this past year, I know how much you can actually improve in a year, and that a year is a very long time. So I think in one year, I can already be a pretty good LCS support, and in two years, I could be the best. Busio talking about the glow up over the years. How about the glow up from game one to game two? Not just for him, but for all of FlyQuest. Well, I mean, he basically, he basically accomplished it. He's first team all pro LCS support. He said, hey, in two years, I could be the best support in the LCS. You just won first team all pro. You're in the finals. You're tied up. Man made it happen. In the finals, tied up with some flash hooks. Pretty nasty turnaround on the Nautilus for him. And the team all together uh, with a really big turnaround here. Let's see if we get into draft number two uh, or number three here because the changes that they made going into number two were so, so immediately evident. Yep. All right. We're going to have Jensen not allowed to play Oriana again. We're going to have Jan not allowed to play Smolder again. We're going to have nobody allowed to play the Volley Bear, specifically Umpty after that game number one. And Masu's Kalista was definitely a problem for TL in game number two. All these bands making sense to me so far. Let's see, too, because TL also focused so heavily on banning away uh, Jensen. When they're on red side, they, they ran three targeted uh, Jensen focus bands there, following it up. Uh, up the Oriana with the Huey, but you're not afforded that luxury on the blue side. Got to take away some of those just universal prio picks, the Renekton go to too easy uh, in too many situations, <laughs> as well as the bottom lane kind of for TL, really needing to have a winning strong lane. TL, if they don't have winning bottom lane, the, the whole team just operates completely different because you need Core JJ, the captain, big shot caller, out and moving around on the map. And to do that, you need to win bottom lane first, so then you buy some roam timers for Core JJ on some sort of engage champ. I'm not going to comment on this unless they lock it in. Because Have you been a, a fan of the top lane rec size or it, no? It seems so obnoxious to deal with. Yeah. I was watching some so LEC no. earlier today, <laughs> watching Broken Blade just bounce back and forth between tunnels over and over again. It definitely seems like it could be a problem. I will say it's also incredibly unfun to lane against. It yeah, just feels I'd... like no matter how the trade goes, he won the trade because he burrows and he heals the full. Just eat the dirt and heal back up. But I will say, you know, after after the early laning phase, I, I do think you know, it offers a lot of less value than some of the other meta top lane champs, which I think is why we don't see it everywhere. Okay, well, we have Yawn getting that Varus locked in first for, for him on Team Liquid's side. Over on FlyQuest, they're going to answer immediately with a Senna pick. Now thinking about what they want to lock in for Jensen, it looks like the Annie worked out just fine in game number two. The Ari has also been one that has been banned away from him before, but the Annie's going to be the decision. Hey, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Yeah, the Annie's much more team oriented than the Ari. They're like pretty similar in, in some of the plays they can go for, but Ari, of course, the single target, and then you're looking at um, some other vibe priority here too, but Annie, the AoE and the Tibber's damage just from Leandri's burn was so effective in the last game. It still gets answered by the Dragon. APA is pulling out his other two trick champion. Tippers is just another minion you can get Stardust from. Yep. Ah, I see. I no see. problem. To execute. Yeah. More stacks. Max the stacks. Also, we're finally going to switch the supports this time around. The previous two games uh -huh. have been Busio's Nautilus into Core JJ's Tom Kench. You have one with a fishing hook and one that is a Why, water critter, but now <laughs> it's going to switch the other way. We'll see how that matchup goes this time around as we're into the second phase of the bands. I also just think red side, uh, you have Senna, you have Tom Kench. We're getting spicy jungle top. From we got a no West, ban, is right? that correct? Uh, well, well, we'll get an update on if that was actually a misban or if that is a UI error. Uh, either way, for FlyQuest, you know, they are on red side. We're looking towards Blippo, some sort of spicy counter pick. You know, he's going to have the ability to go towards that. They're going to need damage from jungle and top. You know, it could look towards something like Felicin once again that has been working really well for them. Obviously, pairs well with the Annie also. User error on FlyQuest side, and they will th thus be forced to lose the ban. So only four bans for Sucks. FlyQuest this time. Yeah. Skill issue. They were too <laughs> slow locking it in. A true skill issue indeed, as Team Liquid said, you know what? Inspired's Lee, pretty damn good. Yeah, I don't want to play against I agree. Against. I agree with this ban <laughs> wholeheartedly. Take that thing out of the game. They do not want to mess around with it, especially because look at the, what FlyQuest already have laid out for themselves with a Senna Tom Kench lane bottom and an Annie mid. It would have been so perfect. Honestly, keep on targeting him. Uh, follow it up here. 
see what they can go with. The Vi is still available. Vi and Zin Zhao, both options for AD junglers. We're really looking at some of the AD junglers. Mm. Let's see what this last one is. The Rel taken off the table. FlyQuest will spin their one second phase ban on that tank engage. Powerful option there. Let's see. Team Liquid wants to utilize all their time thinking, and they're saying, hey, you know what? Whippo has red side fifth pick. He's the kind of guy who would slam an Olaf. Let's keep him away from it. Yeah, going to be able to ban that away. I think it makes sense to have some sort of a protection ban. I'll be curious to see, you know, where we we find uh, Impact actually going. Oh. Uh, Viego would make sense. You know, another AD jungler there, especially the pairing with Annie is really, really strong. Annie's all up, up front first. Viego really needs that first reset. So you pair it with this champion. You get that first kill. You get the resets. Viego can go crazy. Um, but I really just want to know what is Impact going to pick here? Is it just going to be Cassante, which is banned out, excuse me? So it's got to be, it can't be Cassante. It could be something like Udyr that we've seen him go towards. Mm. Um, you know, Jax is available. We've seen him go towards that blind a few times. Um, otherwise, it, you're starting to move kind of like beyond what is the, the meta picks, at least for him. Well, the jungle could just be locked in first instead. Give him a little bit more time to think about it. Jax, Jax could go okay. to either role. True, yeah. Um, yeah he got, it's, a, got a pentakill on it yesterday, so he can definitely play yeah. that. Yeah, well, Inspired got a pentakill on Viego when he was in Europe, so as oh, far as the, the jungler pentakill is going around. They, they locked it for yeah. impact. This, Wait, yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's very common. But <laughs> not for <laughs> impact. No, right, not for <laughs> impact, impact. Fans. We're, yeah. we're talking about Mr. Cassante uh -huh. protecting himself. He's throwing off your narratives. All right. No <laughs> more narratives for impact. ADTF locked in top. <laughs> I mean, there's a reason that those narratives exist. Let's look through his, his champions play at all time. It's like only range champion. Oh, oh, oh yes. Oh, the okay. gameplay comes out for Bwipo. We actually mentioned this on the Wait, live. On the live dive. Yeah, this is gonna be interesting though. Do you, do you actually like this matchup though? I feel like, I feel like a TF should just be able to play the barrel game pretty damn well. Generally, range range tops can be kind of difficult uh, for GP because of that. But the reality is, if you can win that barrel game, if you can actually play it well, it's gonna be really strong to be able to attack other sides of the map because you're gonna be able to throw down the GP ulti. You'll have Senna ult over the top. So two cross map ulties to assist the Viego and the Annie, which are gonna be the ones that are really hinging around, you know, for this composition. So there's so much upfront damage, so much setup. I do think it makes a lot of sense there. I'm just <laughs> really blown away that Impact is bringing out ADTF because this feels like so out of left field for him. Yeah, I was gonna point out the burst damage that, that comes with your Gangplank ultimate in allowing you, uh, inspired in this case, to make plays with Jensen and just make sure uh, you can get some of these early kills. You don't have to worry about a minion wave being built up on you. Gangplank always has to be very wary about uh, early pressure and early tower dives. Yes. Especially if APA on his Aurelian Soul actually does uh, find time to roam. Remember, APA, when he started out as an Aurelian Soul main, it was the original Aurelian Soul that was a early game uh, roaming beast. Now, of course, it's much more scaling, but uh, definitely still could go for those looks. I mean, this is just so interesting because Impact, he has played forever. There's so much talk about how long this guy has been around. He won a world championship yeah. in 2013. He has zero Lucian top games, zero Vayne top games, zero Quinn top games in all of that time. And to me, bringing out an ADTF is much more that than it is a Kennen, which is something that right. he has played as a range top. But like, this is so not his style at all. And you can see on your screen, congratulations to Jensen, who has now passed Wild Turtle for third all time in career wins in the LCS 342. Ooh. You want to talk about veterancy? There you go. Also got to talk about Jensen. So he is going grasp. And I've seen this where people go grasp and they go double scaling HP runes. Um, and you can go overgrowth as well. So he has overgrowth. I don't know if he has a double scaling HP runes, but I will assume that he does because he's playing this style. And then with Annie, you're building a lot of these kind of bruiser items. You can get like 35, 3600 HP. And as we're waiting on these minions to march down their lanes, Raz is standing by for an interview with Coach Spawn. That's right, I got Coach Spawn with me. Last game, bloody one. But what were your takeaways off of that, the loss? I mean, I just think we made too many unforced errors, honestly, in the early game. I think that, you know, Yandai bottom lane, a couple of deaths on the mid lane as well, uh, just not great. So they're playing like, we, we call them stupid comps, right? So like, if you know exactly what the comp wants to do, you know, they're playing Annie Renekton, and like two of the most fourth champions in the game. And we just didn't dodge engage enough. So get rid of a couple of the picks. 
Makes sense. This one is an interesting one. So first of all, reactions on stage to the, the missed ban from FlyQuest, but also a lot of people are talking about the Twisted Fate, just like the Twisted Fate top lane because Impact is known for playing uh, non-carry picks. Just an overall reaction on the draft from your side. I mean, yeah, I, I actually talked about this when we signed Impact that like I think the whole, oh, weak side top laner, tank player only is like kind of bullshit, to be honest. I think that he's actually a pretty good tank player, so uh, a carry player, so like we're, we're happy with the matchup, so we'll see how it goes. And the missed ban, like, I think that's just them talking. They've got a couple of yappers on their team, so they're probably just mulling over what they want to ban. That's what I thought, too. All right. I'll send it straight to the cast and get their thoughts. Yeah, it, yeah. Impact has already had some uh, some good carry jacks games uh, so far, even as recent as this season. So definitely rewarding the confidence there. Core JJ and Yon get the Ooh. early level two, so they get the early beneficial trade off Core JJ's hook. I mean, Impact has had some good carry games throughout his career, but let's be honest. <laughs> you guys are so doubters. <laughs> well, there there is a reason that there is this narrative, and it's because 80% of his games over 11 years. Uh, oh, guys, Fusio is about to drop here in bottom lane. He pops the, the thick skin to keep himself safe. Yes, the TP is going to return him to the lane, but one auto attack away from death down there in the bottom 2v2 as top lane's getting shoved in. So Whippo's under some pressure now as well. Umpty's just going to hang out in the Gromp rush and see if there's a play to be made. If they teleport Busio in down here and then these guys just get dove with the wave, it could be trouble. But it looks like Team Liquid does not want to risk it here just yet. Upti going to go for the Grom. Yeah, you saw some question mark pings here from Blue Side, kind of uh, trying to figure out where Inspired was on the, the Wolf camp. They're just going to steal away the Gromp and protect that push in and go for the reset. Meanwhile, Inspired will cross through mid lane. Uh, he was kind of hovering there for, for any sort of option that showed up, but no aggressiveness. And this is this is just going to be so exciting. You know, I'm talking so much about top lane because I think the game is going to pivot a lot around that, right? You know, I do think the impact, uh, he has the ability to dominate this matchup. The champion, I think, has the ability to dominate this matchup. And this is potentially some trouble, though, here for him. All right, Inspired's coming up, but it's double mobility summoners for impact. Spectrum all connects. Gold card back onto the Viego, because remember, if you try to stun GP, he just eats the oranges and gets away anyway. Ghost. So yeah, Impact pops no summoner spells there and still gets away with about half HP. He's a veteran, cool, calm, and collected on the top side. Another trade into Busio's health bar. Uh, let's see. If, yep, a little bit more, even on the back end of the Piercing Arrow. But Impact, he gets right back to pushing uh, duty here, actually, with the built-up wave. Nice by Whippo, though. Even, you see, this is one of the reasons that this is such a hard matchup, though, generally, is because you can do the auto, and then the W is an auto attack reset yeah. as you're actually locking in the card. So Impact did the instant double autos onto the barrel, and that's generally how TF can dominate the barrel game in this. Whippo accounted for that, timed it, still hit the barrel chain. And these matchups, when you're playing range into GP, come all down to the barrel game. Because if you're going to play Vayne or Quinn or whatever into it, if he's hitting those barrels on you, you don't have enough sustain, and all of a sudden, he's hitting W, so he just starts poking you down, and you can get pushed out. But if you're winning all those, it can get really hard for the GP. And now we're in this position where Whippo's hit enough that Impact is having to back up and having to play defensive, and you need to be the one pushing because you have no TP. Especially when a Gangplank gets an early Sheen for that extra just snap trading power, it's pretty difficult to go back and forth with it. So I agree with you, Isaac. That mini game with the barrels will be so important for both of these players as Umpty and Jensen were both hanging around the top side river. Jensen has to head back over into mid as Umpty starts up the and the reason he just goes for it with full confidence is because they've got the support roam up to the grubs. You see Core JJ now on vision, making uh, his presence known. Meanwhile, they could see with their minions in bottom lane, Maso and Busio, bottom side, easy pick up there on the grubs for TL. And we see APA going aggressive with the flight there. You're just trying to farm Stardust, basically. You're just trying to take yeah. these trades when there's an opportunity, when there's no minions there. You W forward, you farm it up as much as you possibly can. And, and take advantage of the windows that your support is providing this extra power so you know your opponent isn't going to do anything about it. So take advantage of the window, grab some extra little benefits, and then Core JJ right back down to bottom side as the wave is going to crash in there. So the timing works out really nicely, and Jax can just transition down to bottom side Scuttle Crab. And things are going fine for APA here in the mid lane, farming up. Jensen going to do what we saw him doing in the previous game with the Annie, trying to maintain control over the lane with the Tibbers. It does get trapped in the singularity as Whippo uses his ulti to force Impact back away from the turret. Impact still trying to it's hang around, leaf. get as many minions as he can. But yeah, Whippo's got enough damage. He scares Impact all the way off. I mean, this is actually horrible for Impact. When you're playing the range versus melee and you don't have the push, your TP is, is so important, right? And he doesn't have TP. Whippo TP's back, pushes him out, and now Whippo's gonna be zoning him completely off. Yeah, Whippo's got him zoned away, but Busio's now the focus here in this bot side, 3v3. APA already used the Falling Star back in mid to force Jensen away and blow his flash, but his first blood over to Umpty's Jax. 
FlyQuest now in retreat as Inspired and Masu try to get back. Jensen's made the rotation over, but the Tibbers was also used earlier. Both mid laners have joined the fight, but it's already over for FlyQuest. Inspired barely hanging on, has to go all the way back, and Team Liquid has a 1-0 lead. That's huge for TL, being able to push on bottom side afterwards also, and because uh, Whippo was unable to add his ulti because he had already used it, they aren't able to turn it back around. Full vision coverage and control for TL around the Dragon too. It's going to be an exciting game, man. This one looking like it definitely could go either way. Um, Whippo walking back does have that Sheen double longsword now. As we're going to see this fight one more time. It just started off by Busio looking to go in aggressive. Umti heals up with the honey fruit and is able to eventually find this angle. As Yon had a really nice back step on the Spectral Maw there, dodges the stun. Umti goes in, gets the kill, flashes out before the root does connect there for Masu to keep himself safe. Meanwhile, back in mid, Jensen versus APA, checking in on that Stardust. APA sitting at about 47 right now. Remember earlier on, it is going to be slower stacking, but once we get to the 20-minute mark or so, you're kind of looking for that 10 per minute as sort of the baseline, what you would measure it against. Bottom lane 2v2, again, just scrapping non-stop with these guys. Masu trying to get as much damage as he can on the back end of the fight, utilizing the range and the power of the Senna. Another extra lick from Busio, and Yon's down to half HP. And honestly, the FlyQuest bot lane doing quite well here, despite that early trade, you know, going so bad. They got the TP out of Busio almost immediately. They stabilized in this lane. They're doing well now. Um, it can get hard later on, obviously, for that Tom Kench, though, as Varus is pretty good at punching through you. Wave right here, kind of hovering right in front of Tower as well. They just clear out the vision for impact so we can try and make the most of it, and then head on down. Let's see if Umpty actually makes it in time. Yeah, they know that he's there because of the control ward as Jensen, again, just trying to get away from the falling star. Turns the ulti right back around on APA. Neither one of these mid laners really fit to fight anymore, but Inspired finally clears out the control ward that spotted him earlier, and he cannot complete the Drake. And Umpty does get there in time, though. Yeah, they chase him right off of it. I mean, the health bars are pretty close after that, but they are going to get some more Stardust off of that Tibbers as well. So APA actually still pretty happy about those ult trades. And every time you ult trade, you are also getting Stardust to connect. You get five for every time you hit someone with your ulti. So honestly, not that bad. Core finds a hook. Nicely done from Core JJ, forcing out the Devour from Busio to keep that Senna safe. They also get the Gangplank ulti from Cross Map out of Whippo. So a lot of resources having to be spent by FlyQuest there. Core JJ, nice hook. Yeah, really nice hook there. The GB ulti being down is always something that's gonna feel really nice in the 1v1 for impact because there's more threat now for him in that isolated 1v1. He rushed Tabby's though, as he was a little bit on the back foot. Uh, I'm expecting him to go Shiv. That's pretty much what, what everyone does go these days on, on the TF top, but we'll see where he wants to go from there. And we also have to see how early he gets active on the map, right? Because you want to be getting out on the map, making things happen <laughs> they, with his TF ult. This ward, this ward behind Dragon, saw him get in there. Okay. Busio's got to be careful, though. He does not want to overcommit in the bot side river. This was the tragedy of game number one for FlyQuest. And now with APA down here to help burn it away, there it is. Umpty can secure that Drake and get out. That was really nicely done. And even the little angle that APA took here to add the extra damage, make sure he doesn't uh, expose himself. That's an ace old main right there. <laughs> that is an ace old main right there for APA. Uh, also, nice little job just sneakily picking up this dragon because they also had gotten the first three grubs. So even though you see Inspired and FlyQuest uh, with the mid priority into grubs now, it's not gonna be like six grubs stacking for them. So right. not gonna be super dangerous for TL and TL actually taking the opportunity to use their bottom side presence to make sure uh, they can get some extra damage on this tower, get some turret plate money for themselves and maybe Fusio some catfish dead. food. Yeah, Let's see, this is a 3v1. Fusio is gonna try to endure this, tank it up. The burst is pretty significant though. Core JJ, one more turret shot, nearly oh, kills him. Calculated. But close don't count. Team Liquid pick up their second kill of the game. They're gonna get a ton of plate money too. Inspired, Masu and Whippo, seeing if they can find some kind of an answer across the map here. But now a TP will reinforce the bottom lane turret for FlyQuest. The Catfish is back. He's as impact the bell. gets dove as the Dawning Shadow does not do enough damage to kill him off. Whippo's still looking for one last shot. The point blank his as APA finishes him, that'll be a one for one, given the top lane. Yeah, Busio TP's back for round two as they get the dive on impact and got all his sums there as well. And they're pushing up mids. So there's action in all three lanes constantly here. 
I think Buzio could have stayed under tower if they had GP all, but because they didn't, it just felt too risky. No one was TPing down to actually save him in that 1v3 situation. Yeah, you're the farming Tom Kench this time. It's not like the Nautilus from game one. He is tankier, but still not close to tanky enough. Meanwhile, then, since you had APA going up to try and cover impact there and, and like bait in the kill onto Blippo, they did leave up mid uh, for one minion wave worth of gold that Jensen was able to push in. I gotta say, man, Top is looking a little cooked for impact. It's, it's gonna be tough now. Essence Reaver already completed for Whippo, so now he has infinite mana, he's gonna be pushing, and he's, he's reached that level nine from an advantage. He's taken more plates, he's gotten a kill, like he is just gonna be scaling to infinity, and you're gonna be playing a, a champion that's losing in side lane, he's just kind of running around and gold carding people, so he's gotta find some sort of action on the map. Okay, Jensen and Inspired gonna try to get this kill on Impact here. They drop the Timbers, but Umpty's ready to respond. Now the GP all trying to keep Jensen alive, but it ain't gonna work here just yet. Inspired needs more damage. They finally kill Impact off, but Umpty's about to make it two kills. Whippo barely surviving back in the mid lane. No! He dies to the burn from Leandri. Team Liquid's got a six to two game. If they show the replay, you'll notice the split second that Inspired sees Umpty. Jensen still flashes in for mm -hmm. the play, but but he actually backs off. So Inspired backs off once they see him. Uh, Jensen still goes for it, and then they force it through, and it results in really big gains for TL. Well, and three kills of the Jax is a disaster. The Jax is going to be so strong. He's got his Triforce now already. We saw him get a pentakill yesterday on this champion. He is off the races. When you're playing from ahead, you're going to be a monster in side lane. APA as well, really strong, gets a kill in mid lane. He's got the Leandries done. And this is what you're talking about. It showed up yeah. a little bit too late for to be able to highlight what you were talking about, Kobe. Yeah, but that, that allowed Umpty to go right in onto Jensen because Jensen flashed for the play mm -hmm. uh, and tried to force it there. And then Umpty is able to pick the other one because he flashes here. They get the extra turret shot. And so, as you say, really early Trinity Force. But Batai immediately back from the replay and Busio is down. Important to point out in that top lane dive that Inspired flashed when the turret shot was already in motion. So he loses that summoner spell for free there too. Team Liquid now up about one and a half thousand gold as turret plates are about to fall in 15 seconds. I mean, this this hot debate of, uh, of impact on carries, you, we saw the video from Whippo at the very beginning of the day where he had this huge grin on his face and he's like, well, impact, if he's not going to be able to carry, then your team's not going to be able to win, but AP... Oh, he's sleeping. He's watching the other fight. What is he doing? He's asleep at the wheel. That is 100%. He is, he ulted top and he's watching the dive happen yeah. top and he lost way too oh. much health. <laughs> Where's the typing? Where's the typing? Oh, he, he typed. APA's on a killing spree now is again out of the replay. We're back to live, and APA is 3-0-0 zero, zero on one of his signature Oof. champions. What, what else can you say besides oof, man? When you die like that, you feel like a fool. He said, what are you doing? Watch your screen. That's what else <laughs> you could say. <laughs> he's letting Whippo know that he's going to want that one back. Team Liquid up 2,000 gold. They've got Rift Herald in their pocket. Busio's trying to join up with Masu and Inspired to grab a kill on Yawn, but it ain't going to work out. Here's your gangplank ulti. Dawning Shadow's not enough either. Now Umpty's coming here. in. Team Liquid is ready for the fight. Umpty finds the lockup, but Busio's got the save. Inspired, out of the heat for now. And here comes Core JJ now. He's got to be careful trying to get away from this one. Umpty jumping right back to make sure there's no kill onto the Nautilus. And that's going to be a benefit for TL because they have APA getting a tower on top side. That's going to be outer tower gold for the Aurelian Soul. More Stardust to boot. This champion scales so well still that even though they give up their dragon on the bomb side of the map, they're going to be very happy with that trade. And when we heard APA talk about their matchup against C9, and how they were able to beat them. He talked about how, yeah, they just gave us too much free stuff in side lanes. Like, they showed too many guys in too many places at once, and they were just ro out rotating them around the map. There's a good ex example of that as APA picks up some more free resources. Team Liquid up over 2,000 gold as FlyQuest and TL are tied in Drake's now. Yeah, both both. Does have info that MT is around, so he's gonna have to back off. But it's also pretty problematic, you know, that Inspired and Jensen are getting behind the pace of the game because, again, the whole point of that duo is that you get ahead, you one shot someone, you get the reset. If you can't get the reset, Viego really does struggle, especially yeah. against a champion like Jax. You're just gonna do so much more if Viego's not getting that quick kill. And then if we see Aurelian Soul in team fights lock up Tibbers with the E, then all the benefit that we saw from Annie last time around where the Tibbers was burning everyone and demolishing these team fights isn't going to be there as well. I think there's a lot of pressure on Whippo to carry this game because Whippo is the hope for FlyQuest. He is 
fed on Gangplank. He has the lead. Gangplank is a very, very good uh, courier for money. This champion uses money incredibly well if you're able to hit your barrel chains later on. But that is the key. Vision so that you can hit your barrel chains and really make use of the crits. GP is one of those few champions in Modern League of Legends that you feel like can really pull off a 1v9 if you are playing it to the absolute ceiling of what yeah. it can do. We know that Whippo has been very fond of this champion in the past, and the pressure is on now for him to step up here in this game. And I think Vision is so key, like you're talking about, Kobe, because especially when there's, you know, multiple, TF is basically a marksman, multiple marksmen over on the other side. Yeah. With range auto attacks, the barrels can just get killed off instantly every time you're dropping them in these later fights, uh, which can make it almost impossible to get anything done. Plus, you have this enormous amount of zone control from a champion like Asol that makes it difficult to actually walk up and even be able to get in range for these barrel combos, because especially as you start getting more and more Stardust and that E gets bigger and bigger and bigger, like that thing is just a GP ulti on a basic cooldown later in the game. That executes. Yeah. <laughs> Not Very bad. nice. Built in Elder Dragon on it. What is it with the dragons and the executes? I just now realize it's a common theme. Where's Shivana's execute, huh? Shivana's only what a half. The dragon. original. Shivana gets uh, five MR for half, killing a dragon. Half of an execute. What kind of scaling is that? Round gets down, down to armor. zero. <laughs> yeah, Shivana. Spyro gets to be the Elder Dragon. A Soul just gets to drop GP ulties on a basic ability. Shivana gets five MR. Shivana came out in 2012, <laughs> all right? Shivana will have her time of it. Shivana is actually just cosplaying a dragon. No, <laughs> all right. Fair. Bottom lane, we have one. Could be a dive on Whippo. He's gonna try to turn it around. Dying Shadow! Snipes off the out. Big shot coming in from Masu. Definitely some big defense there. I think it's just gonna stop at the one kill for FlyQuest here. But you'll take any money that you can get to try and get back into it. Yes, sir. Um, that, <laughs> that is one of the champions we didn't quite mention. Uh oh Jensen gets caught by the Chain of Corruption, but there's nothing else behind the chain, so he'll be just fine. Yeah, no deep vision here for Team Liquid. So uh, they knew the rotation was coming over from Inspired and Busio. Don't want to overchase there, even if you hit your skill shot. 3 0 and 0 in the Cerulean Soul for APA. 174 stacks. Like I was expecting, around 20 minutes and 200 is where it's going to equalize. And from there, it'll just become more and more of a frustrating issue for FlyQuest, as Team Liquid will be happy to give resources to this infinitely scaling. Omega Bomb of a late game champion. Yeah, and he's scaled already. It's two items. He's the first to two items here for the Aurelian Soul. APA is in such a critical position right now as Umpty is able to get the vision and, and they're rotating over. But the plan is try and play this flip push. You've got TF here with double mobility summoner spells and a static shift who annihilates minion waves. And these are the last couple lower bracket runs that we have actually had you know, that resulted in wins. Uh, I was actually looking back over the last couple of years. It's actually about 50-50, almost exactly 50-50 okay. teams winning from the upper bracket versus the lower bracket. So people like to talk a lot about, you know, lower bracket advantage, playing the extra games versus upper bracket advantage, kind of getting time to actually prepare specifically for one team. Um, but this is another one where I I think it's a, a little bit too close to tell. And in this mid game, I think the critical you know issue is going to be how to FlyQuest deal with the Team Liquid split push mm -hmm. because the uh, impact is not going to stop. Static Shift, Twisted Fate with double mobility summoner spells and a fed Aurelian Soul are really good side laners. They can push in both side waves and then look to make plays. So it has to come from something surprising here with an Annie stun or an inspired stun making use of their flash and then you know gangplank ultimate and just trying to trying to pick people off but tl if tl are careful in their split push i feel like they should be able to accrue multiple advantages it's really interesting because i also think there's an argument for later on for actually just putting Jax in the side lane have g have have impact the milky group. way argument yeah, i like yeah, that one have impact group <laughs> and then be able to just ult the side lane and actually assist yeah. him for things like dives and whatnot because Jax is going to scale so well in that side lane and umpty likes his odds in that fight, just chunks out half of Inspired's health right before the dragon. I think you earn that privilege when you get a pentakill. Yeah, he's got, his, like, he's got right. a jack star. You, uh, you have unlocked the split push <laughs> privilege as a jungler. The DLC, you uh -huh. now you get side lane gold. Yep, we will give you solo tower gold. We will give you minion waves. Fly quest trying to come up and challenge as TL wants to go for the Drake. Whippo flashing over the wall to keep himself safe as Dumpty tries to engage on Jensen, who has to flash out to barely escape himself. The singularity is down. FlyQuest is on the run. Whippo inspired and Jensen all barely hanging on as Monster tries to cut it out. He pops the cleanse to get away from the gold card. Impact has to escape off to the side. Team Liquid has somehow not found a single kill off of that. FlyQuest will retreat in time. That singularity was insane from APA. Dragging inspired away from the kill onto Umpty, so neither team team drops a champion, but TL come out with the objective. Okay, now, oh no, Busio 
The Tom Kench tries to flash out and live through it. The thick skin, he gets over the wall, and Busio lives. I gotta say, I'm actually shocked that he bought a heart steal this late in the game. He's gonna get no stacks on that thing on the Tom Kench. Yeah, currently max health gained is zero. I mean, he got he got it late, right? But it's like, who are you gonna be autoing in these fights where you're supposed to be getting these stacks? It just doesn't really have a lot of value unless you can get it early and stack it up. But we can watch this fight one more time as FlyQuest were trying to push it in the river, but it was TL that laid the trap. They were waiting. Core hex flash over the wall does look for the hook. It's responded to by that flash, and then Umti goes in on the other side. FlyQuest looked to try to turn around on him, but this is a singularity you're talking about. When you get rooted up, the singularity still pulls you. So you get bear assaulted, you're still getting pulled into the middle of that singularity. Yeah, and then they limp away, and even though FlyQuest members do live in the end, their health bars have sustained too much damage. So the objective and all these flashes critically go the side of Team Liquid. They just burned the uh, Masu flash, the Whippo flash, as well as the Busio flash. All, all these timers here uh, really taking down. Nobody on the side of FlyQuest now has that get out of jail free card. Team Liquid, see if they can abuse that advantage. Something that's actually really critical as well is playing around uh, the Falling Sky, Skies, I believe it is, is the upgraded... Skies Descent. Skies Descent. It's, oh, it's Falling Star. Yeah, yeah, I got the yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, So Skies Descent, the upgraded ultimate for the ASOL, which is now ready for APA. So if you can try to force that out, try to put pressure on him before some sort of major fight, it's actually pretty critical because it is very hard to win a 5v5 that isn't just going horribly for the ASOL when he has that thing. It's gonna splash on every single member. That puts Rylai's on you, that puts Leandri's on you. That does lots of damage. Jensen now engaged on by Opti. They bring in the firepower from the Gangplank Cannon Barrage to guarantee that Jensen gets out, but that's a big cooldown, man. Team Liquid happy to force that one as they continue moving forward, establishing vision lines and controlling the FlyQuest side of the map. Man, they're actually potentially just gonna move over towards Baron area, try to claim vision. They can start threatening that, because now no GP ulti, no any ulti. That's kind of what makes you scared to start it up, is that AoE. Yawn, though, caught out. Yawn gets rooted up by the Senna, but FlyQuest, as soon as they see the TF over their heads, they retreat. They do not want to overcommit. Yeah, nice little collapse there. And that was kind of a... Uh, uh, Let's see. Here they are. Core JJ goes for a dredge line, but he ain't going to get anything from it just yet. Umpty is off to the side. He was looking to be there to cut off the escape route if that engage worked out. Yeah, nice little shadow there that they try and use, though, to get the surprise. Don't land the hook. Don't get the play. But you still can just go right back to the original plan. Push on your side waves and then keep this pressure on FlyQuest. Continue to get small advantages. The splashes are going to come back up, though, so FlyQuest are pretty happy. Um, I breathe a sigh of relief that nobody got hooked in in this mid lane attempt at a pick because now once they start to get their flashes back, then they can hope for that big dream team fight again where they get these resets for Inspired, where the Gangplank pops off. Uh, and they just blow up a couple of the early members. And it looks like Bubbo is probably just going towards Collector 3rd, so he's going to be on three crit items. He's going to be 16 relatively soon. He is 15. Uh, I'm not sure exactly how close he is actually to getting 16. Let's see. Uh, it's it's going to be a while. Um, but when you get that level 3 ultimate, plus you have, you know, Death's Daughter, the true damage in the middle, plus you have the triple crit items now done, like one ulti plus that center of the ultimate uh, with a barrel chain can be... That's it. Like, that could be your full health bar as a squishy champion. So it does get very, very scary. You can see APA actually uh, picked up the Verdant Barrier. Uh, so working towards that Banshee's Veil, which I think is really smart against this burst comp. Uh-oh. Core JJ getting jumped on there by Inspired. He goes Whoa. back into the trench line. Team Liquid loses their support before the fight even really starts. But now Jensen's about to drop the Singularity. They barely keep him alive thanks to Busio. And Inspired gets shot down by Yon. Whipper wants to get in there, but he can't do any damage with the barrel. Octi drops and Jensen's the one dropping him. Team Liquid has lost support and jungler both, and Yon has no health and no summoner spells. FlyQuest is heading towards the Baron, and it's APA on defense. Oh, Masu actually tagged it too. Auto start going off, taking a little bit of extra damage as we get the reset here. I don't think they want to mess around with this one. That is too much damage. Core JJ, though, he gets caught, flashes out, and then hooks immediately back in on the call for the turn, but is immediately deleted, and it leads to too much pressure. Here we go. All right. Whippo getting jumped on by Impact with APA right there. Whippo's flash is wasted. That is a huge pick for Team Liquid. Umpty is respawning in three seconds, and Whippo won't come back for another 40. This is just really nice from TL, and now they're going to, I think, potentially start up the Baron. They saw that Whippo was around. He was trying to play that barrel game with APA, so they call up Impact. They pop the LT. They spot him out. They get that kill. They haven't started it up just yet, but with Umpty running back out, 
There is an angle for them to start and potentially look for the turn, so they're going to be hitting it now, and it's going to go down fast to this Varus, this TF, and this Aesol. It's so much Baron DPS for TL's side. FlyQuest, you can see they're contemplating making some kind of an approach, but there's just, there's no, just no point in it, man. That Baron is TL's all day. Three and a half thousand gold lead, five kills ahead for Team Liquid. It's such a good lesson, even in LCS finals. Reminder that sometimes it matters even more what you do after the team fight. You know, stick around, poking the Baron, couple of extra autos, a little bit of extra damage there, then going up to the minion wave, and TL take advantage of it. We finally see Impact with a huge Twisted Fate ult to get them the pick that results in Baron. And now, the better split push team has the Baron buff to split push with. He annihilates the turret on tower side. Uh, on top side there. A nice little sneaky dragon here from FlyQuest, but they're gonna lose so much of their base. Okay, there's your Gangplank ulti. There's the Dawning Shadow, and they immediately kill Umpty before Team Liquid can fight back. Impact wants to make a collapse from the side, but Whippo's fighting him off. The rest of TL disengage, so it's just a single kill going over to FlyQuest, but importantly, it puts the brakes on the TL War Machine. Yeah, exactly. It's gonna slow down that Baron push a little bit at least here. Now, that is quite nice. Get that kill on to Umpty. Impact now does have that third item, goes for the Storm Razor. So it's really all about that upfront, that first auto with the Rapid Fire, with the Shiv proc, with the Storm Razor proc, and that gold card, trying to get picks around that. But FlyQuest is going to have a harder and harder time finding the correct target to actually dive on. Yon is going towards Wit's End. There's a Locket uh, on Core JJ that is going to help him survive. We already have the Banshee's Veil done for APA. Impact, you could probably 100 0 him, but like, kind of who cares? He's not really the important member. Uh, it's really tough to, to know which target you're going to have to commit to. Also, since you don't have control of the minions, you aren't going to have control of the vision setup because uh, you always have to play catch up. You have to catch these waves so you don't fall behind the experience in gold. And so that allows. Uh, the other side to constantly move in and take away the surprise opportunities that you might try and go for. Uh, and on top of that, they've also got a Twisted Fate ultimate that will reveal you, even if you do have a surprise play coming. So see if FlyQuest can, can actually make it happen here and carve out a comeback play for themselves. Team Liquid grouped up bottom. There it is. The Ready to push play. towards the tier two. Jensen and Busio having to back away. That tier two is not long for this world. Yon gets rooted, but there's not like there's gonna be any follow-up to it, really. The turret drops, Team Liquid up almost 5,000 gold still. I feel like they do such a good job of checking their vision boxes first. They move in, they get their wards, they pop the Twisted Fate ultimate, they slowly and safely take the tower. And you can see how much range APA has now, you know, on that Q over the wall. He's just spamming the Q out. He has his singularity takes up about two thirds of the lane at this point. It's so much. It's man. very difficult to actually play around, especially when there's additional poke and whatnot that's going to be thrown out too. Yeah, and he's got a full two level lead onto Jensen here. Uh, you can see the experience bar, the little uh, purple bar underneath their icons there. He's, he's almost halfway to, to 17 as well. Meanwhile, Jensen here sitting on the Annie has had a pretty rough time. And you can see the same thing is true in bot lane. You know, Jan is, is level 14. He's closing in on 15. He's going to be 15 about the same time as Masu and Busio are actually 13. So uh, they have some major level leads. Umpty, again, going to get locked up. Pops the Counter-Strike. Dredge line from Core ain't going to hit anybody. Reign of Arrows tags inspired, but the Chains of Corruption don't lock down FlyQuest long enough for Team Liquid to make a follow-up play. FlyQuest, they are praying for the barrel chain to turn it around. Wide Whippo needs to make an appearance here. There aren't too many brushes to hide in, but that is certainly one of them. Only the ones really close to your base, and those are the ones that TL are going to suspect. It's going to be really tough. You can see Impact now has a QSS as well. So really, they're trying to just kind of check off all the boxes. Like, nope, can't one-shot this guy. Nope, can't flash tippers this guy. You know, really making it harder and harder and harder. Uh, Umpty, you know, probably going to be getting something a little bit tanky as his next item. I don't know if he's going to go towards GA or just a full-on tank item. I think either are completely reasonable choices. You just need to make sure that Tibbers engage with Viego doesn't get an instant kill. And if I think yeah. that doesn't happen, it's going to be so hard for FlyQuest to win fights. Checking in on the stacks, APA has cleared 300 on the Aurelian just about 30 minutes into the game. Over on the other side, Masu just about to tick 140 on the Senna, so some serious range stacking up for him. <laughs> and we've been talking about this uh -huh. all split long, but he, when he's playing Ziggs, when he is playing Aesol, he's so in his comfort zone. Even if you pick him off inside lane, even if you get kills on him early on, he knows how to pilot these champions in the team fights. He knows how to get that damage done. And the record speaks for itself, right? People don't always want to spend the bands because they think, ah, it's not the player we need to worry about or it's not the champion we need to worry about, but he makes people pay for it time and time again.
It's the player and the champion combo here. Exactly. APA, quite the specialist, quite the controversial uh, you know, member of the team as well. But I feel like I've seen more and more people actually going to his side after uh, being critics of the trash talking. It's, it's been a bit fun for everybody now. Team Liquid still with control of the whole rift. The next Drake spawns in 30 seconds. Baron also alive in under a minute. TL, the world is theirs. This is their game to lose at this point. APA ready with the skies descend if FlyQuest try to engage on them. And this is just so annoying because even though Impact didn't really do anything in lane, hasn't really done much in this game, he's just nonstop going to be walking down the side lane, pushing it, saying, you got to come or you're going to lose your base. You got to come respond constantly. Where FlyQuest wants to be grouped as five, looking for these fights, you know, getting that one shot, getting that engage, he's just constantly going to draw you down and make someone respond to him. FlyQuest trying to push out down the mid lane here. And once again, it's going to be inspired. Jumping on Core oh, JJ. Also. But he's got to be careful. Impact jumps in the middle of everybody. Core JJ is still barely going to stay alive for now. The skies descend, but nobody's down on FlyQuest just yet. Humpty kills off Whippo. Inspired. Dying to the breath of life. And Humpty grabs the double kill. And Busio heads for the hills. He tries to escape, but it's Masu about to die next. They can't quite find him. And APA is unstoppable. Masu and Jensen are running the wrong way. And APA is about to show. Oh my. A double kill for the dragon, and Jensen has nothing to do but wait for his own demise. He'll even waste the teleport trying to get away. A triple for APA, and the game is about to end. TL Split Push eventually gets their victory. They're on to Nexus turrets now. 15 to 6. Impact on the TF top. APA on the Aurelian Soul mid, and Team Liquid is going to match point. Deathless on the signature Aurelian Soul for APA. Fully stacked bounty. Team Liquid cruising to another victory here as they move to two and one. APA played a really good game on the ASOL, and another great game here from Umpty on the Jacks, looking strong as TL are looking tough to beat. FlyQuest bounced back in a major way in game two, but game three, again, pretty one-sided. It really only felt like top lane went the way for FlyQuest that yeah. they would have hoped. Whippo got an advantage, was able to you know get this bad base timing for impact, you know, created an edge there, but it never amounted to anything because they're on the back foot so heavily, they couldn't really find the angles to get those fights that they were looking for. And he was kind of tracked in every single team fight. And when you have a split push advantage like that and they keep on using it, that's where these level leads come from. That's where multiple roles have two level leads and then they're eventually able to push the minions on the side so that you have to go for an engage. You can see the pressure before this game or before this play right here. They're like, oh my God, likewise, we have to go for something. That's when the trap closes for TL. In fact, he teleports in with his ulti. He has his double summoner spells plus his QSS to make sure that he is able to get out and TL are able to chase down all of them. And to me, it's just so much about how Umti and APA zero out Whipple in that fight. He's the strong member. They immediately go for him. They fly in on top of him. They drop the singularity. He's on the run right off the bat. Has no opportunity to be able to actually find any sort of a barrel combo. And they hope Team Liquid moves to match point and we're heading on over to the LCS lounge to break it down. Welcome back to the lounge. Uh, Team Liquid up 2-1. One. one more game would give them their first title since 2018. Wow. Mm -hmm. Two, what? This is where we sit. That's crazy. That's <laughs> never were, happened before, You were before, the right? only TL never, believer. Never once. Uh, me and Miss Chim Chim both yeah. said TL 3-2. But you never know. So much can still happen. Let's take a look back at how we got here all the way back to game one, which is about two and a half hours ago. It's been, you know, looking back, Team Liquid was in a, a huge control of, of game one. Yeah. Ben definitely had an, uh, an aneurysm looking at the draft. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think game one was lost in draft, but this game was not lost in draft. Yes. No. Only game three, yes, it wasn't lost in draft. I mean, what stood out to you, Ven, this series? Like, why do you think TL would be uh, one game away from the title? I think the games fly drafts correct around ball lane, they win, and I guess they don't, they lose. I feel like it's weird that they don't, they, they, they ban Smolder to give Yon a champ that is not only better in the mm. playoffs, but also a better champ for him. Yeah. When they could have kind of picked Senna into Smolder and actually had lane pressure and scale well as well. Yeah. When, and then they, they gave Varus, they get stomped in lane the whole game, that tower, mm -hmm. then Masu roams and Buzik gets dove. 
but also gets nothing done. Top this, side either. So like, what's the point of picking this champ if you don't know how to play it? Yeah, it's clear that they don't like the Senna side of Senna Smolder. Yeah. 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 And that was evident across yeah. the game one to the game three draft because Smolder was locked and they picked Kaisa in game one. Mm -hmm. And that's yeah. that's paying off later in the series. Also, weirdly, you know, they missed a ban that in game crazy. three. Yeah. That's that's so, that was also Masu's ban. So play Masu. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. The rookies are choking. <laughs> or if anyone that's yapping, if they, people are just like, oh, ban, good, no ban. <laughs> I will say, Fly losing. Oh, this is the post game back breakdown of the most recent game, not the game yeah. you just saw the highlights of. APA 25,000 damage there. Oh, yeah. It's actually wild how much it looks like it was one sided from just the goal difference over time, but it didn't feel like that at all. Oh, why are we drawing this again? Oh, game two? this is introing we, game two highlights. We're talking about we. I was like, no. We. I can't draw like this. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. I mean, I feel like. TL, so the really interesting thing is when these two teams faced off against each other last time, mm -hmm. it felt like even in the TL wins, FlyQuest was the team that had a little bit more tempo on the map. They were taking a little bit more initiative. Mm -hmm. In this series now with these two teams playing each other again, it kind of feels like TL are in that position, right? Because they did have some good positions from which they could have won in game two as well. Yeah, yeah. I agree. This, this right here even, uh, was a bit of a wild sequence that FlyQuest did bounce back from. They, I mean, I'd say game two was obviously the only game they won, but they had that 2v2 where they burned both flashes and didn't get the kill. Yep. Then they had this Baron, which got stolen away with the Kalista yep. Lee Sin combo, yet they still triumphed in the game. And the replay starts like pretty late because a lot of the times it looked like they were still looking for a hook. They didn't want to make it a 50-50, yeah. <laughs> but Varus was playing in such a way that like he couldn't really hook him. He hooked him into a terrain, so he wasn't displaced. There's a lot that happened in those fights. and. Going from game two to game three, they were just bloody. And it felt like any of these games can tell just off of one misplay from either team, which is fun for a spectator. I'm sure stressful as hell for the coaches. Yeah, so through two <laughs> games, <laughs> we had a lot of combined kills per minute. Man, 33 versus 32. Oh, this would be comparing the game, first game series. One and game two. Oh, this games. game one and game two, yeah. I just heard. Yeah. yeah, just game one and game two, which is, I mean, I feel like game two carried that quite heavily. Yeah, this game kind of slowed it down, you know? It, it was still it really did. scrappy, but in terms of, like, combined kills per minute. And it, it felt like the, the, the switch flipped really quickly. There were a lot of blunders, as you mentioned, like, this play's happening top lane. Don't look at mid lane oh, no. at all. Don't look no. at mid lane at all. No. <laughs> oh. As, as Aurelian Soul gets the most Mickey Mouse kill mid lane, uh, <laughs> So like a lot of that happened early on, yeah. But then it, the game pace sped up. Also, feel like this game against FlyQuest mismatched their draft. They're playing this like kite back bottom lane and top lane, but they're playing a full cent mid jungle. Yeah. Terrible. Why wouldn't you pick the Nautilus with the center if you're gonna play a Diego any type of team comp? Yeah. And absolutely, yeah. especially and then, and when top. especially when Mons Masu was spending a bunch of time top lane in this game yeah. and yeah. diving the. And I'm also they probably got caught off guard by impact TF blind pick. Yeah. But they're like, uh, Pippa, what do you want? Um, uh, GP, 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 <laughs> and then they're like, okay, whatever. But and I mean, there were times when it looked like GP absolutely was yeah. like, it was a good answer, right? Like we were watching these late game team fights, and it's like if they don't kill the GP soon, he this just takes one. over. Um, yeah. gets the and they found him. Umti just mauls him. Oh yeah, Umti's <laughs> flank is actually crazy. <laughs> Umti on this Jax has been great. Yeah. He's had some off. really good jungle jack games. I want to take him off the jacks. I mean, but what do you do? Because they're so hamstrung with their bot lane bans. It feels like um T APA are kind of getting whatever they want. They're just and also like if you're not able to punish APA just picking a soul. Yeah. yeah. That's trouble. I do think the uh, the ban from FlyQuest, I'm sorry, TL on blue side ban from Nexon forcing TL. And really quick, the ban from really, really quick here. This is their playoffs so far. The first series was 3-2 to FlyQuest. This series currently 2-1 to Team Liquid. And these are team stats. So just such a close series. Yeah. Slight advantage early game to FlyQuest throughout everything. Pretty much just I, the fact that there's 320 oh, no. kills in eight games. And let's just touch back on Core JJ now because he's one game away from winning another title. And his time For on cursing him? He won the yeah. two oh, titles. No. Oh, no. <laughs> And he ha he's finished second here in the Greek theater to Sven. That's my head in the background. Don't worry about that. Uh, in 22, their best finish was, was third place. Last year, again, their best finish was third place. Now one game away. They need to win one of the next two to get the title. So you're saying with the championships that started his career in LCS, it started with success. 
Oh no. Oh no. It did Jack, start with success Jack in the LCS. It did start with success. Yeah. <laughs> the last time I tried to pull this off, it failed. So maybe it's an impact thing. Maybe it's an impact. No impact, thing. no win. Ooh. Maybe that was true for EG. We talk about Coach J all the time. What about impact? Maybe he's difference maker. His tank TF. <laughs> the QSS Tabby's TF. I mean, what's interesting is Whippo has not looked nearly as good in this series as he has in the playoffs, and at least some of that has to be attributed to Impact's play. Yeah, I also think TL is drafting very well-rounded, mm -hmm. banning Renekton, picking Cassante when they can, forcing them to ban it, and then by picking something that he wasn't ready for. Yeah, so I just heard FlyQuest, as the losers of Game 3, get to select side. They've picked blue side for Game <laughs> what 4. A and Team Liquid is one game away from winning their first LCS title since 2019. Find out if they can bring it home after the break. Stop cursing them. <laughs> That's just how you <laughs> talk? It's, 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 now. It. Jet. <laughs> it's hard to fight the Drake. They're going in. Ace, so oh, me. Look. Yeah. I'm flashing out. No, no, it should be a good fight. I missed ult. Look, Jet, keep flashed in. I can't eat you. I'm coming to reposition. Around, I, need, I, need, I need help, I need help. You don't have or I do. You're just not dying. Okay, no, no flash DF, can we hit DF together or not? DF, no flash, DF, no I flash. I need look here, look here. Yeah. I'm kind of out of oh, I'm missing barrels. Out, they're they're out. Solo. Just run, 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 run. I missed That's every fine. barrel, sorry, bros. Yeah, let's just chill. Yeah, I agree. Wait for flashes. Just uh, wait on my item, and if I don't carry, you just report me. Yep, I can carry too. It's okay. No, no, I'm just saying, like, yeah, I, yeah. I just want me to this game. Yeah, yeah. Okay? Okay. Let's, let's look in more. We gave a little okay, bit of Oh, four, no, 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 no. I'm good, 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 good. Watch it. Slowly, okay? Yeah. Guys, I want you to stand up. Throw, throw, throw. I'm out. I'm out. I'm out. I'm I'm good, I'm good. Yeah, big big, 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 big,